to our Sunday morning into afternoon worship gathering. Sure appreciate you all being here in person. And those of you who can join us online as well, big, big hand wave. Everybody give a big hand wave to the folks joining us online. We got quite a few folks joining us that way, so we sure appreciate you being here as well. Today we are continuing, just a little preview, we're continuing in our sermon series on Uncommon Wisdom, and uh, we'll also have announcement time at the end of the service, so stick around to get a little bit of info about upcoming events and things. And also, if you're joining us online, we will have a time where we share our joys and concerns, prayer requests, things like that. You can begin sharing those now in the comment section so that we can incorporate those into our uh, joys and concerns times later. Even if we miss it, keep adding those in there because we'll write these down and give these to the folks uh <coughs> who do the prayers for uh, our two churches. So please share those in there. All right, our liturgist for today is Doug Crook. So I'm going to invite Doug forward to kick us off with some gathering words. And if you'd all stand and join him. Beloved, in a world that criticizes women who lead in the workplace and demeans women who stay at home to tend the families, God's uncommon wisdom calls to us. In a world where churches still deny and repress the gifts, graces, and callings of women in ministry, God's uncommon wisdom calls, us, calls to us. In boardrooms, family meetings, town councils, pulpits, and church committees, women lead us with their voices, their actions, their wisdom, and their strength. And so God's uncommon wisdom calls to us. For too long, women who lead among us have been unnamed, underappreciated, and exploited as free labor. May we listen and act. And as God uncommon uncom wisdom calls to support the leadership of women, thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening hymn, Praise the Source of Faith and Learning.
At this time, we will open up the floor for the sharing of joys and concerns. If you have either one of those, please raise your hand and I'll come to you with a microphone. If you're joining us online, of course, please add those in, in there. Sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. As you can see, I brought a special person to church this Yay. morning. Made shoes here for three weeks, so oh, she'll, you'll be seeing her several times. Yay. <laughs> Grateful to see Made you. Thank you. Uh, Sherry has a joy. I'm reading it for her as she has lost her voice, so that's a concern, but her joy is her sister Mary Ann and brother-in-law Scott are visiting right here. She's very happy to have them. Mary Ann and Scott, yeah. Welcome. Uh, we pray for your... <laughs> oh, they it, don't look anything like alike. <laughs> <laughs> is it like laryngitis or... Cold. Also, her Uncle Bill is in the hospital in critical condition. Pray for Bill. Um, one of my patients that I have lost her husband um, this past week. They had been married over 70 years. Oh, wow. um, sweetest people in the world, let me tell you. But very sad. I, this is Sharon Pinson. I didn't talk to Herb this morning, but I talked to his daughter, and he was eating breakfast, and she asked, I said, well, how's he doing? And she asked him, and he said, good. <laughs> I could even hear him saying it, so he must be getting better finally. Okay, good. Thank you. Keep us updated. Appreciate that. Good morning. Um, most of you don't know me, but there are a handful that do. I'm Sally Butts, and my parents are Larry and Patricia, and it's a joy to be back in the Valley and to be here in the church I grew up in and to be part of choir. And, um, and I wanted to share about the song we just sang because I know the churches are talking about merging, and that song is, I'm sure, tied into that theme. But also, um, I had the, the joy of being on the Selway River yesterday with some friends fly fishing, and thinking about the rivers that merge from the Selway into the Clearwater, into the Snake and the Columbia. And I'll be uh, over on the west side um, later this um, week and the early part of the next month um, seeing the Columbia. So just thinking about God's work in all the different ways that we merge. Um, and then uh, a joy, a friend that had um, some cancer treatment recently got really good news. So um, the prayers do work. Thank you. Thank you. have a couple of joys. The first one is Sue Driscoll is home. Her heart surgery went well, uh, obviously better than they expected. Uh, she was planning on another week in the uh, hospital area, but she's home uh, and uh, she'd be happy if you want to give her a call. My second joy is my husband Dick had his 84th birthday yesterday. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday. All right. Huh? 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 What? Yeah. <laughs> oh. ah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. Excellent. Happy birthday. I have a joy. Um, my first creator-owned book is coming out this Thursday. Yay. I brought it, so hey. after after church, we after service, we can. I'm going to take it into the coffee room, and you can look at it. And also, it comes out on Thursday, and Thursday is also they're doing an article on me about my book in the paper. So two things. Awesome. Yes. Let's give it a very a good. Awesome. Thank you, and thanks for bringing it to share with us too. That's great. 
Okay. All right. I think that's it. And I don't, not, oops, not seeing in the uh, comment section there, but please do continue to add them if you think of them. Uh, here, if you would, please join me in a pastoral prayer and then all together for the Lord's Prayer. Oh God, we thank you so much for your wisdom that guides us and for community that uh, we surround ourselves with that loves and guides us and nurtures us and, and uh, is just there for us when we celebrate and when we have burdens that need help uh, carrying, we need help with carrying. I'm so grateful for that, Lord God. Today we lift up to you these joys and these concerns. We're so grateful to see uh, Mate you here today grateful for a three-week visit as well. That's fantastic, and, and uh, grateful for the safe trip for May as well, and pray for that you're back when it comes. And in the same vein, Lord, we're grateful to see Ann and Scott here today with Sherry uh, visiting, and uh, with their presence, just being there for her, and, and, uh, and uh, Lord, just wonderful to see family come together. We do pray for uh, Sherry's Uncle Bill, we pray for, um, we just lift him up and pray for, for uh, everyone who surrounds him as well. And we pray for Sherry's voice as well in this cold. Lord, we pray for Patty's patient that lost a dear loved one, a spouse of over 70 years. Uh, that's, that's a big blow, and we just pray for, for her and for her family uh, during this time that they'd um, find strength in each other and uplifting uh, words and comfort and presence from many. Lord, we're grateful to continue to hear good updates on Herb and grateful that he's able to be at home and is recovering well and sp speaking and sharing that he's doing okay and he's doing great. It's just good to hear that. And we're so grateful to have Sally here uh, visiting, not visiting, living here in the, the valley and returning here, being there for her family, her mom and her dad, and uh, we just welcome her home and so grateful that she's here with us, uh, able to share in our communities and the great words of, you know, just uh, uh, as we navigate p potential merge, just uh, encouraging words and grateful to hear that. Lord, so good to also hear about the good news that Sue's home, that the surgery went well. We pray for continued improvement for her and that it continue to go that well, that she not have any setbacks, but that she would uh, progress in her recovery. And wonderful to celebrate a, a milestone, a birthday with Dick, and just so grateful for uh, 84 years of life. Just good to see him, and nice to see his, uh, his b him being upbeat too, and I'm grateful we could share together in celebrating that birthday. And Lord, celebrating also, and we're so grateful for Jorge is in his first completely own, published his own, uh, his own creative endeavor, all for him that he came up with. Lines, words, pencils, characters, all that, inking, all that. We're so grateful for that. And uh, just lift him up to you during this uh, landmark time that's coming, the publication date or release date. And we're just so grateful for uh, creativity, for uh, Jorge's uh, uh, willingness to share that with many others. And uh, Lord, we look for forward to many more to come. Lord God, I'm sure there's other things that uh, I either forgot or we didn't feel like sharing for one reason or another. So Lord, we lift uh, those up to you. We pray for strength. We pray for wisdom. We pray for courage as we take step after step after step. We love you, God. And now we come together to offer up the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture for today nope canticle of wisdom and then scripture is that right scripture reading first yes Doug <laughs> yeah scripture reading first Today's scripture reading is from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. A good woman is hard to find and far more, worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trust, trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. She shops around for the best yarns and cottons and enjoys knitting and sewing. She's like a trading ship that sails to Paro far away places and brings back exotic spices, surprises. She's up before dawn preparing breakfast for her family and organizing her day. She looks over a field and buys it. Then with money she's put aside, plants a garden. First thing in the morning she dresses for work, rolls up her sleeves, eager to get started. She senses the worth of her work and is no hurry to call it quits for the day. She's skilled in the crafts of home and hearth, diligent in homemaking. She's quick to assist anyone in need, reaches out to help the poor. She doesn't worry about her family when it snows, their winter clothes are all mended and ready to wear. She makes her own clothing and dresses in colorful, colorful linens and silks. Her husband is greatly respected when he deliberates with the city fathers. She designs gowns and sells them and brings the sweaters she knits to the dress, dress shops. Her clothes are well made and elegant and she always faces tomorrow with a smile. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say and always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her household and keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. Charm can mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of God. Give her everything she deserves, adorn her life with praises.
All right, if you would please join me in a canticle of wisdom. The words are on the screen there for you. And uh, we'll be to our response, the song response, will be to the tune of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. May God grant that I speak with judgment and have thoughts worthy of what I have received. For God is the God even of wisdom and the corrector of the wise. Wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her purity, wisdom pervades and penetrates all things. For she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God, an image of God's goodness. In every generation, wisdom passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For she is more beautiful than the sun and excels every constellation of the stars. Compared with the light, she is found to be superior. So here we are, we're in our third week in our series on Uncommon Wisdom. And we've taken a look at, through the first two weeks, through the book of uh, Proverbs, and with this idea about wisdom being personified and shown to us in concrete ways. Because wisdom can be a, uh, a abstract idea, you know? It can be out there, it can be nebulous. And Proverbs presents to us wisdom in concrete ways for us to follow and pattern and model our lives after. And so, we've done two weeks of Proverbs, we're gonna do today in Proverbs, and we're gonna do the last chapter of Proverbs, and I know, I know, I know, the women in here are <laughs> they're waiting to see what is going to happen here with this passage of scripture. I have to tell you, uh, I didn't, of course, the, we follow the Revised Common Lectionary, so this is the passage of scripture from Proverbs for this particular Sunday, so it's chosen for us. Now, if you know the Common Lectionary, we get to choose from a gospel, a letter, an Old Testament, and a psalm as well, so we do have four choices, but we're talking about wisdom, and we've been working our way through Proverbs, so I felt like I have to go with Proverbs 31. And also, you know what? I, I have to tell you, um, there are passages of Scripture that many preachers approach with fear, trepidation, a little nervousness, or sometimes avoid altogether. And I said, we're not going to do that because I want to talk about how perhaps without knowing or understanding the culture 
and the purpose and the genre of this writing that people have taken this passage of Scripture and have twisted it as a tool of manipulation or even oppression, okay? Now, I have to tell you, when I was over at Clarkson, as I was walking down the aisle, we, our liturgist for the day caught me at the steps and was just like, who chose this passage of Scripture? Did you choose this passage of Scripture? And I said, well, in a way, yes, I sort of did, but please withhold any judgment because I want to present maybe it, this passage in a way you haven't heard before. So we'll withhold first, and then we'll talk after. And afterwards, she said, okay, you, I'm a, we're, it's all good. Everything is okay. Now, I have to tell you that, yes, I have been very familiar with the ways that this passage, this chapter, has been used as a blunt force against women in churches and at home, right? Um, my own wife, when we were in college, she wrote a paper about this passage of Scripture and the ways that it had been abused in history, in church history. So I'm very familiar with it. I'm very aware. And so I, I invite you to set aside the thorny past of this passage of Scripture and maybe hear it today a little bit differently. Now, I have to tell you that just because what you're hearing might sound different from what you've heard other preachers do. It's not my, it's not like I'm up here, I'm like, I don't like how this has been done, so I'm going to make up my own way. This has also been a valid possible interpretation that I'm going to present to you, but for some reason, most male preachers don't pick this passage, this, this interpretation. So, I'm going to present it to you. I'm going to see if you've heard it quite like this before, and uh, we'll see if we can get something from this all together that will speak to us. So let's begin first. I'm going to talk to you about three things that you might not have known about this chapter that maybe they wasn't presented to you. The first is, first of all, it's in Proverbs, right? And in Proverbs, we've talked about this for several weeks now, how is wisdom presented in Proverbs? As a woman, okay? All throughout Proverbs, wisdom is presented in human form as a woman so that you could see concrete examples of what it's like to pursue wisdom, okay? And this chapter does on purpose. The, the author, King Lemuel, did this on purpose, combining it with other passages that had come before, basing wisdom on the form uh, in the form of a woman so that you would link it all together in your mind and go, oh, clearly this is another passage where wisdom is being presented in a concrete way. It's not so much this is for women, a checklist for you to do. It's a model for all of us to pursue wisdom. Now, let's begin. First of all, women, when you read this, and it has been presented in the past in the way it has, how many of you read this and Raise your hand if I express the feeling you have felt when you've heard this before. Uh, guilty. Okay, one, yeah. Daunting. Felt daunting. Impossible. Okay? Have you had that feeling of like, oh my gosh, this is... <laughs> Just anybody, this, just so you know, this person, if you don't read this and get the idea that it is impossible for a person to be this, you're reading it wrong, okay? Because this is on purpose presented, it is a poem. You need to know that first and foremost. It is a poem. It's actually an acrostic poem. Y'all know what an acrostic poem is, right? You, you don't know? Okay, so an acrostic poem is that every letter of the uh, every first letter of each line of the poem either it will spell something when you read the the letter out or in this case it's the alphabet this is the hebrew alphabet 22 lines of a poem each line starting with a letter in order of the hebrew alphabet from aleph all the way down to Tav, A to Tav, Aleph to Tav, not A to Z. They have 22 letters, not 26 like we do, and their order's different than ours as well. 
But this is a poem written to teach people to memorize so that they have in their hearts and minds wisdom and how to pursue it, how to model your own life. It is not so that you go, checklist, checklist, I did this today, and by the end of the day, by the way, none of this is possible in one day. All right, it's kind of like, I don't know if you ever watch on, uh, on uh, social media, some, there's, there's always experts on time and time management, and they're like, okay, so I wake up at four, and, and, and I, uh, I do two hours of exercise, and then I cook for an hour and wake up the rest of the family, and then after they're fed or off to whatever, then I take two hours to meditate, and then, you, you see, you, that's kind of what this is like. It is literally impossible to do this, and that's the point. The poem is presenting wisdom personified so that you always have an example, a model, for all of us. And by the way, yes, it is for all of us. In Hebrew culture, guess who the bridegroom is? Or the husband? Who's the husband or bridegroom in Hebrew religious culture? Who, say it louder. Well, if that's Christian, we've taken it and said Jesus. But in Hebrew, it was God. Who is the bride? All of us. The people. So all people were supposed to hold this in their hearts and minds as a model of wisdom, how to live a life of wisdom and valor. In fact, this poem begins with the line, we, it says here, a, uh, uh, in a lot of our translations, it says a good woman. It's literally, chiet kayal, chiet, chiet kayal, a woman of valor. So I want you to understand that wisdom is presented here as whatever you do, you do it with valor. You do it with courage. You do it with dignity and strength. That's the idea. Not a checklist of this is what I'm supposed, this is my role in life. It doesn't matter what your role is. It's how you do your role that matters. And that's for all of us. Valor and wisdom should be our pursuit every day, every action. It is packed, this poem, with hyperbole on purpose so that you could, I mean, it's easier to remember something that's big and challenging and hard and over the top, much easier to remember and pursue. So uh, in the Hebrew culture, not, uh, not just women were taught this. Actually, boys were encouraged and, in fact, taught this over and over so that their own lives would model this pursuit of wisdom and valor. And also, by the way, it was written or encouraged for them to memorize. This is a, si a funny little side note that uh, boys were encouraged to memorize this in Hebrew culture, in fact, still are to this very day, so that they would always have in their hearts and minds words of praise to give to the women in their lives who they overlook and take for granted. You know what I'm talking about? In fact, I told you that this is not, it's not written as a prescription. This is who you are supposed to be. It's more like a description of wisdom and maybe model yourself after that. But I will tell you there is one line of instruction in the poem. It comes in the very end and it says this. This is the single line of instruction. Praise her for all her hands have done. Because sometimes we take for granted, don't we, the wisdom and valor and courage of the women in our lives and their leadership. Who, here in, he, who in here has had an experience, maybe in your professional life, where someone else got recognized for work that you did? That ever, that ever happened before? Yeah? 
<laughs> yeah, a few times. Uh, or how often have you worked extra hard and someone else who maybe a is um, oh, mediocre has been uplifted against you? That's happened? Yes, it's happened to us, probably happened to us all, but I'm willing to bet it's happened to more than a fair share of women in leadership because we take for granted the women in our lives. And so this poem was specifically given as on purpose for boys to memorize so that they would remember to stop and pay attention and give honor and praise to the women in their lives. Not take them for granted, but instead honor them for their valor and their courage. Okay? So that's the second thing I want you to know. So first poem, second thing, memorized on pur for people on purpose to always have in their hearts and minds for us all to follow. And then for us, third, to celebrate the valor and courage and wisdom that we see all around us and not take it for granted. That's the point. That is the point of this passage. It is not a checklist of if you're not living up to this, you're a bad uh, a partner, a bad spouse, a bad mother, a bad, none of that. It's that an encouragement to live with valor, whatever you do, with courage and wisdom. And by the way, that's for us all to do. So in fact, actually, um, the uh, Aset Shael, Aset Shael, a woman of valor, in Hebrew cultures, they would actually, this one, they would lift this phrase and they would use it any time they witnessed somebody, a woman doing something valorous in the community. They would say, ah, I said child. Or that would be like, I don't know, maybe in today's day and language, you go girl, you know? Like, you got this, yeah. That's the idea. And so uh, this is the idea that I want you to take from this. Not, oh, an oppressive list of ways I'm not measuring up because guess what? Nobody measures up to this. This is divine wisdom personified. You can't. You can't live up to it. But you can pursue it every day as a goal, all of us, as the bride of Christ, the bride of God, to pursue these things. And so I believe that this is a better, more helpful understanding of this passage. I don't, you don't have to like it, but I don't want you <laughs> to also view it as oppressive because I don't think that was the point. I think people have taken it, misguided more than likely, and used it as a tool of oppression when instead it's the exact opposite. It's a recognize, lift up, honor the valor of those around you working. At, don't take it for granted in their everyday life doing courageous, wise, valorious things. I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm using it. <laughs> Is it who's my English people? <laughs> but, huh? Valorous. Close enough. I'm, I'm going to give it to myself. Thank you. All right. But it is not our roles that define us, but it is the integrity and bravery that we bring to those roles as we are faithful to God. And what does it mean to be faithful? Through this passage of Scripture, for all of us, it means to be trustworthy. It means to pay attention to the needs of other people. It means to be good stewards of what we've been given, right? That's how wisdom is presented. But also, when the time is right, to take good risks, with the things that we've been given and the gifts, not to hold them back, but to share them with the world. Care for the poor. Be prepared for hard times and bad times. Make, uh, good, uh, make God known in our choices. Live with faith and dignity. Think before we speak, and when we do speak, use kind words. This is wisdom personified. This is our pursuit that all of us should partake in every day of our life. And then when we see it, honor it. Give thanks for it. Celebrate it. And so I want to do a little celebration right now. If you feel comfortable doing so, ladies, would you please stand? 
for us all here. And I want to honor and recognize your valor, your courage, your wisdom. So everyone else who's sitting, take your hands. Do this right here. You have a nice big thanks to these folks who have provided an example of wisdom and valor and courage and you are blessed and you have blessed us and we thank you thank you and when we take it for granted because we will take it for granted know that it's not because we're uh, mean or mean spirited it's probably because we, if you're like me you're just sometimes forgetful and moving on to the next thing and so I want you to know we thank you, we honor you, and we don't take you for granted. All right, thank you so much. You guys are awesome, you're amazing. Thank you for being great examples for us. And so now, if you would, please join me in prayer. Lord God, we are so grateful and thankful for this poem that is loaded with wisdom, and it's for all of us. It's not a, it is not an oppressive list of to-dos and to feel guilty, but instead a encouragement to pursue wisdom for all of us in all of our roles, no matter what we do, to bring valor and courage and wisdom into it. And Lord, we want to say thank you for those who have done so in their lives for us. When we've taken it for granted or just written it off as day-to-day, everyday stuff, we want to honor and thank you. Thank you, God, for these examples for us. Lord, um, for in our lives where we feel like maybe it's been, it's too late for us to say thank you, Lord, give us the courage to recognize it's not too late, but instead to give thanks by living the example that others have given for us, even if they've um, passed on. Lord God, we thank you for them as well. And we confess how we've taken for granted and overlooked and forgotten. But now we commit to live our lives with valor and courage and wisdom in their honor. To give thanks with our lives. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, offering here. And Mia will, I believe, pass around or walk around with an offering plate. And if you have an uh, offering to give, um, raise your hand and Mia will come around. If you're joining us online, here's some ways that you can participate in our giving. You can mail in your uh, tithes and offering checks. There's the addresses for the two churches there listed. You can drop them off at the offices. Just make sure somebody is in the office. Call ahead. Uh, you can participate in online giving for the Clarkston Church. It's the big green button over on the right-hand side. Click that, and it'll give you to a spot to give. For Lewiston, it's that little donate menu bar button. Click that, and it'll take you to a spot to give. Or you can download an app on your smartphone and utilize those. For Clarkston, it's the Tithely app, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Download that. Search for Clarkston UMC. For Lewiston, it's the Vanco mobile app. Download that, search for the First United Methodist Church, use the one in Lewiston, Idaho. And we continue to encourage you to give beyond the plate this month to our special giving focus of Family Promise. And you can go to familypromiselc.org slash donate, and there's a a spot there to give. You can also learn about, and we're going to talk about it during announcement time, but their uh, benefit auction and dinner coming up real soon. And we'll give you some more information about that, but you can find that on the website as well. All right, if you would, please pray with me for our offering, and then we'll move on to our closing songs. Dear God, we thank you so much for these gifts. Lord, we do pray that we would be good stewards with these gifts, that we would use them in a way that is wise, courageous, also full of valor. Uh, And Lord, we pray that each gift given will multiply over and over and uh, help encourage others to also pursue wisdom. We love you, God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, if you would, please stand and join in our closing hymn, The Servant Song.
right. Thank you. You may be seated. Just a few uh, announcements real quickly. And of course, if you have any, uh, please raise your hand and I'll make sure to get you a microphone. But we do have coming up this week, Coffee and Contemplation, 930 uh, on Friday in the Wesley Room. We also have our book study continuing, the Vital Mergers book study. Uh, that's at 11 in the Wesley Room on Fridays. Encourage you to join us for that. And as I mentioned, the benefit dinner uh, for uh, a Family Promise is this Thursday at 6 p.m. It's at the Williams Conference Center on the LCSC campus. I believe the tickets are $40 a piece, and you can find those online. You might be able to get them at the door, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on that. Maybe go online or call, and I'm sure you can get them that way. But great, great nonprofit here in the Valley doing a lot of great stuff. October 6th at 10.30 a.m., all church worship gathering at Clarkston UMC with a potluck to follow. So make sure you get that on your calendar. That's not next Sunday. First Sunday in October. There's five Sundays in s uh, September. So don't think because this is the fourth Sunday. It's next Sunday. First Sunday in October, October 6th, 10.30 a.m. All right. Any other announcements we need to know about? All right, I see a couple hands coming up. I will make sure to get you the microphone so that uh, folks online can hear too. Was you had one? Yes, okay. Tomorrow is um, United Women in Faith at um, two o'clock in the Wesley Room. And it is a week late because it got mixed up and when it was put in the minutes, it was a week late and I didn't catch it. So for you that thought it was a week at late, it is. All right. <laughs> so Friday. tomorrow, tomorrow, Wesley Room, 2 o'clock. Right. All right, perfect. And then did I see another hand over here? I know I saw one here. Okay. All right. On October 2nd, the League of Women Voters and the local Chamber of Commerce are going to be holding, hosting a uh, candidate event in which all the candidates who will be on your ballot are um, well, yeah, sh short of short of the very top, but we'll be uh, speaking at um, gathering at the library at six o'clock at night, and we hope that everyone comes. And um, I'll remind you again next week. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. If there are no other announcements, let's go to where are we have. Your choral benediction. All right. Let me send you off with a bened pastoral benediction. Beloved, may God continue to bless us with leaders of valor and wisdom and courage as we follow the path of God's uncommon wisdom. May we recognize, nurture, respect, and support God's call on all our lives today and all days. Peace be with you. <laughs>